She taught me how to climb. Come on, Forrest, you can do it! So I'm repelling down Mount Vesuvius when suddenly I slip. And I start to fall. And I mean, I'm about to die. He's climbing the rope. And he's getting on us. Inconceivable. I just wanted to shout it from on top of a mountain. Welcome to the Campfire Cast. Hello? Anna. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Um, it's good to Very. finally talk, huh? Yeah, totally. Here, hold on one second. Yeah. I don't know how you turn the... I'm not very good with this. <laughs> it's all right. Hold on. There we go. Okay. What's okay. up? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm um, here. I'm chilling in my van, so it's kind of dark. No way. That's go. so rad. Yeah. <laughs> you, you ch you're chilling in your van like you do when you're... Like I do... Do you really want to see? I'm organizing. You're gonna laugh if I show you this. No, let's okay. let's see it all. Okay. I'm down. Hold on. <laughs> Let me figure out how you turn the camera around. I'm organizing in a parking lot. Wow. From so, post like expedition. <laughs> that's so cool. Where where are you right now? Colorado, um, right? Yeah, I'm in. A, let me close this. It's hot out. Oh. I am in. Um, <laughs> Like, right outside of Boulder. Okay. Because I... So, I got back. Thank you so much for dealing with all my shenanigans. No. I... I I'm, I'm usually more reliable. No. <laughs> I, I just, like... Um, I think we were supposed to talk on Friday. Mm -hmm. And I was coming back from Indonesia back to Delhi, and things just got, like, all, like, mm -hmm. super crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that totally happens. I understand. Um, yeah, it sounded like pretty pretty hectic in your email. <laughs> yeah, it just like I thought when I got back to Delhi. The problem is just the internet. Yeah. Like it's not uh, strong enough to do Skype. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and then like sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not and mm -hmm. like it's just yeah it's totally crazy. crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But hey, that's the way it goes. So yeah, thank you very much. No, I, I don't. I mean, I, I honestly, I got nothing to do right now, and I was just stoked to talk to you. Not even for the gear co-op, just for like, because I want to talk to badass climbers all the time. Ah, uh, oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's nice to finally meet you. Yes, it's good to meet you and, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I. I'm stoked to have you. Um, what does, uh, I don't know, just like, I'll, I guess I'll start off just, um, first of all, you're coming to Beer and Bouldering, right? Yes. Are you excited? I'm super excited for cool. that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so I fly out of, um, hold on, let me make the sun go away. <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse. So I fly out of, uh, Colorado tomorrow. Okay. Um, and uh, into Cali. And then I actually work in Oakland. Okay. That's why I'm... I'll, so I'll be in, in Cali tomorrow night. Very cool. And then I work in Oakland uh, for four days. I'm mm -hmm. a nurse in the ER. Cool. Sometimes when I'm not climbing, that's what <laughs> I do. But these days, I'm like doing less nursing and more climbing, which is super cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so after, um, yeah, after that, then I'll come down to Orange County. I'll come down to see you guys. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Super psyched. Yeah, yeah, we're stoked to have you. Um, so I was doing some studying, and I've, uh -huh. I've actually, I don't know, I've followed you on Instagram for a little bit, but, um, so you're, what, La Sportiva athlete, camp athlete, uh, super badass uh, Alpineer, Mountaineer, uh, lots of six to eight thousand meter peaks you've bagged that I've read up on. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. This is just my <laughs> reason. Yeah, no, this is cool to hear. Yeah. I, I, I've never really heard like somebody else's interpretation, <laughs> so <laughs> of what of what I do. That's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's really yeah. I mean, 
that you're pretty spot on. That's what I really like to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, Andrew, yeah. Are, are you a Cal- California native as well? No, I'm actually, I grew up in Ohio. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I grew up in Ohio, and um, I grew up on a farm in Ohio, so it wasn't even really anything to do with climbing. <laughs> and uh, then I went, to, I went to college at CU Denver. Okay. And that's when I started climbing. Yeah. So I was like, I was pretty, I'm 34 now, so I was like 20, yeah, I was 20 yeah. when I started. Very cool. And, um, yeah, I just started rock climbing, and, like, the first people that I met when I went to CU Denver, they invited me to go camping. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to hear all this. No, I, it's okay. awesome. Okay, cool. Keep it up. <laughs> no, we're good. Wait, wait a second. Let me make sure you want to hear all this story. Um, so they invited me to go camping. And because I was from Ohio, like any, like everything was cool. Cause mm-hmm. I like grew up in the cornfields. Right. Yeah. So when I came to Denver, I was like, Whoa, like mountains, like everything was just so cool. So mm-hmm. they invited me to go camping with them to Indian Creek, cool. but I not being a climber at the time, I didn't even know what that was. I just yeah. knew I was going to the desert. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'll go. <laughs> and, um, that same week the, and they were going to go climbing. I was just going to hang out mm-hmm. And that same weekend, like, I, I like, saw climbing and everything and, you know, tied in to a rope and um, they, you know, taped up my hands and everything. I was, like, su- I'd never done anything like that before. I was super, that was the first time I ever climbed. Yeah. And they put me on super crack, which is this, like, classic desert hand crack. Yeah, yeah I've heard <laughs> And of I flat all over it. But I got, like, super hooked on it. I was, like, this is really cool. This is really, like... Um, you know, like something that I wanted to do more of. So mm-hmm. that's kind of how it all like started. But wow, yeah. And then from there, it just kind of like progressed. Like I was just in the right spot at the right time. You know, mm-hmm. living in in Denver. And then after Denver, I moved up to Boulder. Um, and just you know kept climbing, kept meeting people, and learning who would teach me how to climb. And yeah, yeah. So it's kind of interesting for me. Like now that I know more about everything, like. I started, like, outside crack climbing. Like, I had never gym climbed before. Like, Which is crazy. And I, I didn't think, gym yeah. climb until probably a good, like, four years into my climbing. Like, <laughs> That's I've so just, rad. I trad climbed. And I just thought for so long that, like, trad climbing was, like, climbing. Like, that was just, like, I didn't know about sport climbing. Yeah. So, but now I love sport climbing. It's mm-hmm. super fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so cool. That's, really good. that's like the exact opposite of what everybody else does, especially around here, you know. I know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it's so it's funny how thing like it's different for everybody, you know, but like now I know that and I'm like, "Oh my gosh." And soon after I went to Indian Creek on that first trip, um I went to Yosemite. So mm-hmm. for a long time like I would think that climbing, like, in town, like, doing a multi-pitch route, like, 12 pitches was, like, going climbing. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to go climbing. And it's yeah. just, like, yeah, it's just kind of how it all worked for me, which was super, super interesting in perspective That's when I think back about it. Right on. <laughs> right on. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, so, I mean, tell, tell us a little bit about your trip, or tell me a little about your trip. There's no us here. Yeah, oh, that's okay. No, so, um, the past trip that I just did, uh, it was really good. You know, John, it was really, it was a really good trip. Like, it was one of the best that I've done, and I've done a lot. So, I really like, like, my climbing that I do now, I really like to go to, like, these super remote places Mm -hmm. and climb, um, like, unclimbed peaks or new routes that nobody really goes to so it's like the whole adventure of like the research in the beginning of like finding the route finding Mm -hmm. the area then like how do you get there can you go there and like has the route been done or has the peak been climbed and just like the whole the whole idea of it all is just like fascinating to me I love it it's like such a process it's so cool so and sometimes like given that process like you might go and like the area, there's nothing, it's not what you thought it was going to be. Like, you thought it was going to be, like, 
really great, and then you go there, and it's all, like, choss, and, like, you've traveled super far, and yeah. then there's, like, nothing there, you know, like... I could imagine. At this time, we went out, and it was, like, the opposite. Like, I didn't really know what we were going to find, and we found just, like, oh, man, it's so cool out there. It's just, like, endless mountains that haven't been climbed before. Because that area wow. in the Kashmir... Um, had been closed for a long time. It opened in 2011 for foreigners to come through because it's right. We're like 90 miles from the border of Pakistan, and they've okay. been at war. Yeah. Because that's the land that Pakistan and India fights over. So like, mm. when that it used to be part of Pakistan, mm -hmm. and then in I think it was 1947 or something like that. That war, India it got remapped and it um, was given to India and Pakistan keeps saying it's their land so that's what that whole war comes from yeah um so it's just like it was super pristine and like the Kashmiri people haven't seen a whole lot of foreigners yet mm -hmm. so um a lot of them have never seen anybody from the states or from Europe or anywhere so that was super cool they're yeah. super friendly people it's oh, called cool. Buddhist people um, super nice and welcoming and uh, we didn't really we had no idea there's like a couple maps for the area but they're not real detailed and there was one article that was written by somebody from the Indian Mountaineering Foundation um, that kind of talks about these peaks and that's where we got the information about going there but then when we got there we realized that the information in this article uh, was incorrect. Mm. So, like, the valley that we went into for the peak that we thought we were going to climb, like, that peak ended up being two valleys down. It wasn't even in that valley. Oh, my God. So, and we were, like, and this was, like, a process, like, we had horses and everything take us in, yeah. and we had to cross the Suva River. So, like, we were, like, stripped down to our underwear, like, carry the packs over your head, like, through the river. The river's, like, waist deep, you know, almost chest deep. Wow. And so we, like, get all of our stuff in there, you know, for four weeks, like, all of our equipment and food and all that stuff, and um, we're, like, looking around for this peak, and then we realize that, like, it's not there, so we're, like, well, we're going to have to find something else to climb, and uh, we did a lot of recon and uh, learned a lot of things about that valley, and then we were fortunate enough to have good weather and we were able to climb on uh, uh, the peak that the locals called Tare Parbat, which means star peak. It kind of looks like a star. Oh, wow. Cool. And um, we, yeah, we got super lucky. We had good weather. Everybody felt good with the altitude. We had to acclimatize, so we had a high camp. So we had to go up to high camp and then come back down, go back up, and then climb and figure out the route. The route was kind of straightforward that we wanted that we figured out it wasn't um it wasn't too bad we ended up taking a more direct line just because of the rock quality was a little bit better yeah uh super good ice conditions the ice was actually the best part of the climbing the most cool. stable the most secure uh the rock was a little bit loose so like some of the gear placements in that were a little bit sketchy, sketchy. so like now yeah. I was on the ice, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like, cool. felt super secure. Like, That's let's so just climb ice the whole time. <laughs> so, That's yeah, so I mean, it turned out to be, it turned out to be excellent. It was like, it was just, it was just fun, just pure fun. Mm -hmm. Nothing really epic happened. Um, oh, we did, we had a, in our base camp, we had, there's like the Himalayan grizzly bear. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> at night. That sounds yeah, so gnarly. <laughs> Yeah. No, it was kind of crazy. At night, we had uh, um, the bears coming into the camp, and they were kind of, like, messing with our food and eating our food a little bit. And um, that was all fine. But it was, like, maybe after we had climbed, we were kind of looking around. We had a couple days. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, let's see if we can get something else, and let's see if we can climb something else. And we were walking around just trying to do some recon and see if we could access this one peak. And we were on maybe like fourth class slabs or something similar to that. And we were pretty, we were probably like one kilometer from base camp. Mm -hmm. and we were up pretty high. Like our base camp was at 14,000 feet. We were probably at 15,000 feet. And um, Lisa was walking in the front. Rachel was in the middle and I was in the back. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the biggest 
freaking bear <laughs> jumped out and, like, growled. Like, I'm not kidding, John. Like, it was, like, less than 10 feet away. Like, I thought for sure that Lisa was going to get mauled. Like, I was like, oh, my God, this is really happening. Like, oh Lisa's going to get mauled by a bear right now. Ugh. And um, the bear came out, and it looked at us, and it, like, turned and, like, growled. like showed its teeth. And Rachel and I screamed super, super, super loud. And then it took off the other way. But it was it was Ugh. so close. It was, like, I could see it down the back of its throat. Like, I'm not kidding. It was crazy. <laughs> And I think we scared it when we screamed. And you're supposed to hold still when there's a with a bear. Like if you run, yeah. I get it's supposed to chase you. So Lisa held still. Rachel ran, and she <laughs> let's say her instinct, and she grabs me, and like pulls me over, and I'm like, no, no, stop, 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 you know. So that was probably the scariest thing that happened, and that wasn't even with climbing. That was just like, wow. like kind of walking around looking for something else to climb, but. Oh man, it was it was it was crazy. Yeah, oh it was my God. super crazy. <laughs> but wow. yeah, and then we ended up we ended up leaving shortly after that. We we headed out of the valley. But yeah, yeah oh it God. was it was a really good trip. I'm still kind of acclimatizing it being back in in the U.S. because I was gone for about six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was cool. Like, it was cool. Usually, usually Anna. Like, I end, I like to end interviews with, like, a sketchy story. Like, oh, like, I, I'm talking to a climber and athletes. Like, what is your sketchy story? And we, yeah. just, we just took care of it right there. Oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Which I'm sure, I'm that sure you funny. actually have, like, more sketchy stories because of the type yeah, of climbing you do. One. But let's try not to give too much away from your trip. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have, oh god, I have all sorts of sketchy stories. We can talk about those some other time. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, climbing in the mountains is, like, you come, there's some, you know, there's a lot of decision making, mm -hmm. and um, you're dealing with a lot of objective hazards, so yeah, a lot of my climbing has been in the big mountains, a lot of it in the Himalaya and that, so I definitely have sketchy, sketchy stories, <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> for sure, that... Yeah, I could write a book of sketchy stories, probably. You probably should, because that's, like, everybody loves that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, I'll, I'll... But, yeah, the, I mean, the climbing was, it was great. It was, uh, Rachel, so I went with um, uh, Lisa Van Skyver, who is, uh, she guides in the Tetons. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Rachel Spitzer, who um, is an old friend of mine. She lives in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. And I know, oh, here's one short, sketchy story. So the first time that I went climbing with Rachel, yeah. Um, but this kind of ties into the trip, too. Don't mm -hmm. let me get too off, because I can go on, like, a tangent. Yeah, um, yeah. So Rachel and I, in 2007, uh, we went to Patagonia to go climbing. And Rachel ended up breaking her leg. Uh, oh. She had a tib-fib fracture, like, out on the glacier. Yeah. So... We were getting ready to go climb um, St. Exupery. We were going to do a route called uh, Clara de Luna. And we were hiking out. We were going to bivy at the base of the route. And we're, I mean, we're like, we're pretty far out. We're like two days out from the town. And it had been really warm, like unseasonably warm. So everything on the moraine on the glacier was really loose. Yeah. We're hiking up with these big packs. And Rachel kind of stepped on a, a rock and it, like, fell and brought all the other rocks down mm. and a huge boulder came down and crushed her leg and we're like way out there yeah um so that was uh epic and crazy and we ended up uh getting helicoptered out which is super rare for patagonia usually helicopters can't fly in yeah but because the weather because it's super high wind yeah 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 but the um, the weather had been so stable that the military actually flew her out, and I went with her, and we spent like a week in the in the hospital in Calafate, and then she was able to go home and get surgery. But um, the point of that story, besides being a sketchy story, was that Rachel and I had always talked. Like since then, she always wanted to go climbing in India. Oh, yeah. And do a first ascent out there. Mm -hmm. So she had a bunch, you know, she got married. She, after, after she broke her leg, she had like a two year recovery. And then 
she finished nursing school, she got married, all these things. So like mm-hmm. kind of the India trip kind of got put off. Yeah. And then this year, uh, in the beginning of the year, I got an email from her and she's like, Hey, do you want to go to India? And I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go to India. Like I'll go for sure. Um, and I, I've climbed in India twice before. This was my third expedition out there. Cool. And, um, we put together a grant for the, to the American Alpine Club, and that's how we ended up going out to the Zanskar. It was uh, supported by the American Alpine Club, so that very, was super very cool. cool. Very cool. And it was really special to get to climb with her out there because we had we'd experienced her breaking her leg and you know all the years of talking about it and um, just motivating each other to, to do it. And so when we stood on the summit together, it was pretty cool. It was something... Something super special, super rad. That's and so cool. that was the first time that she had done a first ascent anywhere. Oh, wow. And that was the um, highest she'd been in altitude. We were close to like 6,000 meters. So I think what? that's like almost 19,000 feet or something like that. Yeah. So it was kind of cool to like, you know, share all those things. And I really enjoy that about climbing, just like sharing the experience with people and being in the big mountains, it's super rad to like, yeah. you know, have good partners and enjoy the partnership. So yeah, yeah it was cool. Such a super cool. Climbing. Wow. I mean, that's just like we've talked for like 20 minutes now, which is about enough time we have. That's all the time we have. I mean, but, um, so oh, okay. inspiring. <laughs> Sorry. Oh I can gosh. talk a lot. <laughs> no, no. I, that's, I, like you talking is better than me talking trust me but um okay. it's so inspiring just to hear all that oh my gosh oh <laughs> my god um but yeah uh you're coming to the gear co-op on october 24th 29th i think it's the 15th the 15th yes is it? it is the 15th. I, I, maybe maybe we should double check that well <laughs> yeah we should <laughs> <laughs> or we could, uh, I mean, since people are going to watch this, we could just tell them to go to gearcoop.com. So, well, all that information's on there. Oh, your video's out. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Oh, back. cool. All right, awesome. Well, wow, it was so cool talking to you, Anna. I'm so yeah, excited to see you. Thank are you. you. Gonna, like, what, what, so what are you going to do at Beer and Bouldering? Are you, do you plan to, like, do a slideshow or just, like, chill out with us? Or what are you doing? Um... I think I'm going to do a slideshow. Cool. Um, yeah. Fair totally. Enough. That was the plan. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally awesome. We yeah. Need... Probably a little bit of uh, the India trip. And then I have the trip that I did before India. Mm-hmm. Um, I did it. I was in Newfoundland in Canada climbing some big ice lines out there. Cool. So I have some good photos for from that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Totally. <laughs> Hang out, show some photos. Drink some beer. I hope you Drink like beer. Drink some beer. We love beer bouldering. at the Gear Co-op. You have no idea how much <laughs> we love beer at the Gear Co-op. Um, nice. Cool. Awesome. So I'll see you on October 15th, huh? Yeah, totally. Cool. cool. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Have uh, safe travels until then. Will do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Bye-bye. Anna. <laughs> <laughs>